Bible Tough family is Pastor C, and I want to welcome you to Emmanuel's virtual worship experience. Man, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we have to rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, this isn't a day that we made, but this is the day that God gave us. So I believe God wants us to be a good steward of the day that he's given us. Listen, I'm so grateful uh, for each and every one of you being a part of this service. So many wonderful churches that are streaming now, but the fact that you're here means so much to the Emmanuel family and myself. Listen, a couple of things that I want you to do before we start the service. I need you to text somebody right now. Do it right now. I'm giving you, I'm giving you time to do it. Go ahead. I need you to text somebody right now and tell them about this service. Matter of fact, send them the link to today's service because we want them to be a part of what's going on here at Emmanuel Light of the World. Of course, in the month of October, we've been dealing with the subject of saying yes to God. Have you said yes to God? That's the question. I'm gonna give you a second to type in the chat. If you've said yes to God, go ahead, do it right now. Just type in the chat, say, I've said yes to God. I've said yes to God. Go ahead, I I'll, I'll wait. Oh, okay, okay, I see it now. Okay, there you go, there you go, I see it. It's scrolling in, it's coming. You said yes to God, listen. When you say yes to God, it won't always be easy, but it's always going to be worth it. Because listen, no matter what you go through, no matter what you're navigating through, God is always there. We want to say yes to God for each and every area and every aspect of our lives today. Listen, I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to get out of the way. I've said too much, but I'm just so excited to, to be a part of the service and see y'all here with us today at Emmanuel Light of the World. All right. So listen, do me a favor. One more thing. One more thing. Look to your left, look to your right in your house. Tell your husband, your wife, your kids, your cousin, whoever you got there this morning, just give them a hug and just, just tell them you love them. If it's your dog, some of y'all got dogs, I know. Just tell your dog you love them this morning. We're spreading love this morning as we continue our service today. Listen, I love you guys so much. Enjoy the service, get your family, get around the TV. It's going to be a powerful, powerful packed service. Love you so much. Hey, what's up family, this is Pastor C. This is the portion of the service where if you can't sing, if you can't usher, uh, if you can't work with the kids, this is a portion of the service where everybody can participate in. It is time to give, it's time to give. Somebody just type in the chat, I'm ready to give, I'm ready to give. There's a scripture that I wanna to read to you as it relates to giving, it's so powerful. It says this, it's found in Proverbs 11 and 24. It says this, it says, one person gives freely, yet gains even more. Watch this, another withholds unduly, but comes into poverty. Wow. So the Bible is telling us that the one that gives freely comes into more, but the one that withholds and doesn't give sets their self up for poverty. Listen, it's not God's desire, it's not God's design, it's not God's purpose or plan for your life to live in poverty, not in financial standpoint, not from a financial standpoint. God wants you to have enough God wants you to have more than enough so that you can give away and be generous. Listen, I want to challenge you this morning. As you think about what, that, what the word said as it relates to giving, that God will give you more. That lets me know and tells me that what I have that doesn't belong to me, I need to give it because as I give, I'm going to come into more. God is going to bless me. God is going to take care of me, my family, my legacy. More important, God gives me an opportunity to take care and advance the kingdom of God. So I'm saying to you today, give freely so that God can give you more. There's a couple of ways that you can give this morning. You can give via our website. It's www.elotw.com. You can follow the prompts for giving and give via our website. Also, you can give via our cash app. It's dollar sign ELOTW5415. That's dollar sign ELOTW5415. You'll be able to give via our cash app. Listen, I'm so grateful for you that you are taking this time to be obedient as it relates to giving today. So for those watching, our Emmanuel family, let's give. Good morning, Emmanuel Light of the World Church family. Thank you for choosing Emmanuel as your place of worship this morning. And remember to connect with us on social media platforms. Facebook, we are Emmanuel Light. And on Instagram, we are ELOTW94. And this is what's happening at Emmanuel. We are on our 42nd day of our 82 days of prayer. Join us nightly at 8.15 p.m. as we petition heaven. And remember, there will be glory after this. God has blessed us in this season to take care of major renovations in our church building. We have a brand new parking lot, 
new window tint, a new foundation, and on December the 1st, we will be starting our interior renovations. We are asking the Emmanuel family to stop by the church this week to write prayer requests on the foundation of our building before renovations begin on December 1st. Some members have already stopped by and declared that this house will be filled. They also declared on the foundations of our floor, the signs and wonders will follow. Give us a call when you would like to stop by. Our goal here at Emmanuel Light of the World is to see every member a minister. We will have leadership training on December the 11th with Apostle Addison Wright from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Please register today on our website. This event is for everyone. We would love to see you all there. And this will be a virtual event. Barefoot Sunday was a huge success. We collected over 350 pairs of shoes. Thank you to all of the volunteers who came out to support us in this outreach. Our next Barefoot Sunday will be Sunday, December the 5th, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Please collect as many shoes as you can so that we can be a blessing to business owners in developing countries. Calling all youth, calling all youth, elementary, middle, and high school students, we are having an end of the year Happy Birthday Jesus party on December the 12th from 2 p.m to 4 p.m. Sign up with your Sunday school teacher. And remember, have a happy Thanksgiving from our family here at Emmanuel to your family. And this concludes our news and announcements. Enjoy the worship service. Hey, what's up, family? This is Pastor Say, Hey, listen, I wanted to come and just encourage and really just kind of give you that boost as we continue to these 82 days of prayer, 82 days of prayer. Listen, I don't know about you, but I've been experiencing um, some supernatural things in my life as it relates to this time of intentional prayer, uh, intentional. There's a reason why we're doing it and we're purposeful in praying each and every night at 815. I want to encourage you and let you know that as we continue to find ourselves in this time of disciplined prayer, purposely seeking God, listen, it's the powerful pursuit that produces power. Let me say that one more time. It's the powerful pursuit that produces power. We need the power of God. We need God's anointing because it's God's anointing that breaks the yokes and destroys those walls. That's what we need. And I believe as we come together for these uh, remaining nights, um, God is going to do something incredible uh, through the life of not just you individually, but I believe corporately here at Emmanuel Light of the World. So I want to continue and encourage you. I want to say thank you, myself and Pastor Rookie. Thank you so much for the sacrifice that you've been continuing to make each and every night to join us in prayer. Listen, guys, we got a couple more months of this, but I believe that as we do it, as I stated, God is going to meet us. And as you hear me say every night, there will be glory after this. If you believe that, come on, you ought to just tell yourself, there will be glory after this. We're going to experience, we are now experiencing God's glory. So again, thank you so much as we continue with our 82 days of prayer. Y'all be blessed. And you can just repeat this after me. If I receive this word with my mind only, this word will be dead for me. But if I receive this word with the spirit over my mind, over my flesh, over my feelings, this word will be life for me. Lord, I don't need form and fashion. I need life. Well, good morning, Emmanuel, Light of the World. I'm Pastor Rakia Wright, and we are coming back this Sunday with a continuation of our series, Power and Authority. Have you been blessed by this series? Have you been blessed and encouraged and strengthened by the messages that have been gone forth each and every week? If you could, why don't you just type that in 
the chat box say, I have been strengthened. I have been energized, amen, um, by the messages, amen. And so today I believe that God has something in store for us that will literally push us even further. And so as we prepare our hearts, amen, this morning to receive the word, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Amen. And just invite Holy Spirit into this time. Father God, we give you all of the praise and all of the glory. Just begin to bless his name right in your room, right in your home, wherever you are watching this morning. Just begin to give God a great shout of praise, a great shout of praise and thanksgiving. Father, we just bless your name. We give you all of the glory. And Father, we just ask, Lord God, that as we have gathered together, God, as a church body, we ask, Father God, that you would begin to minister to each and every individual, Lord God, that is listening to this word this morning. Father God, let something be, uh, be shared, Lord God, that would truly strengthen the life of the believer that will catapult us, Lord God, into what it is that you have called us to do. Father God, have your way in this time. Allow it to be none of me, but all of you increase that I might decrease in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you and we say, have your way, Holy Ghost, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You know, um, I just praise God for another opportunity, you guys. I really do not take this lightly. I know I have been uh, delivering messages and preaching for a number of years now, but every time I have an opportunity to be able to bring and deliver God's word to you all, I do not ever take it lightly. And so I'm so grateful. I always tell you guys I'm excited and grateful and thankful to be able to be a messenger of the Word of God. I just want to give honor to my husband this morning, uh, Pastor Chuck, who is a blessing to my life, a blessing uh, to your life, to this church. Amen. I honor you this morning, Pastor Chuck. And I also honor Pastor Carolyn, our founding pastor. Praise God for you, my mother, my, my heart, my love. I love you so much mom um and so tonight uh, today we're gonna uh just dig a little bit deeper amen in the subject of power and authority you guys i mean <laughs> i can only speak for myself but these messages have truly been strengthening me um, in the areas of just understanding the power and the authority that has been given. Amen. And really um, just making myself, Lord, I'm available to you. Has that been anybody else's uh, just prayer and just cry in this time? Lord, use me. Lord, send me wherever you desire for me to go. Whatever you decide, desire for me to do, God, send me. And so today we're going to really focus in on um, God's authority. We're going to really focus in on what it looks like for a believer to really come under God's authority in our life and what that the result of that is. Amen. And so we're going to look um, at that today. But before we get into today's passage of scripture that we're going to um, just really dig into today, um, I want us to, to just begin to understand that um, it's, it's, um, a believer's, um, it should be a believer's desire to live under God's authority. Amen. And when I speak of living under God's authority, what I'm speaking of really is living a life of submission and obedience to the authority of God. Because what I've realized, even looking throughout scripture, as we uh, see glimpses of God's authority in the Old Testament and in the New Testament and how um, authority was given, amen, uh, we'll, we'll see that it's really closely related to obedience. And so I want us to, to even uh, give reference to, um, to, um, to, to, to Satan. When Satan was was in in, in, in heaven as an angel of, 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 of light there, amen, uh, it was disobedience that got him kicked out of heaven and ultimately losing his authority. And then we look in Genesis with Adam and Eve, amen, and we see that God had given them 
a delegated authority, amen, but it was through their disobedience um, as they were tempted by Satan where they lost their authority um, and, and, and gave it over to, the, to Satan, amen. But then we see moving on into the New Testament where Jesus comes in, amen, and, and, um, and we see that even when he comes in and begins to conduct ministry, as he's laying hands on the sick, as he's casting out devils, as he's exercising this authority, Many people would, would ask him, well, and whose authority are you coming in? Whose authority is this? Amen. And he would say, this is the authority of God, the authority of my father. And then he dies. He dies on the cross. He's, he's resurrected from the grave. Amen. And then he comes back in Matthew chapter 28, right? And he's speaking forth the great commission to his disciples. And this is what we spoke about last week where he says, all authority has been given to me. Right. And so we're seeing uh, the exchange and the giving of authority all throughout scripture. Amen. And we also see how authority, uh, God's authority, how God has delegated, has given the believer authority. But how did this authority come to Jesus? Amen. How did all authority come to him? Amen. As we see in, 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 um, in Matthew 28. And so I want us to get an understanding about his authority and how his authority came through a simple, not simple act. I don't want to say that it's a simple act, but through obedience to the father. Jesus's obedience, amen, resulted in authority. Hallelujah. And so I want us to understand that even in the scripture found in Philippians, um, two and I believe verse eight, it says here that Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, gave him all of the authority. So we see even in this particular scripture where Jesus humbled himself and where he is obedient even unto death, that as a result of his, of, of his humility and his obedience to the father, that it resulted in God exalting him to the highest place and giving him all the authority. Amen. So I want us to begin to look at a particular person in scripture uh, this morning that I believe that all of us, or if not all of us, majority of us have heard this story. We have, um, learned about maybe in Sunday school, when we were little, we learned about this particular character, but I believe that there's something that the Lord wants us to draw from, from this particular passage today found in the book of Jonah. And we're going to look at Jonah chapter one, and really we're going to be pulling things from um, all three, well, the first three chapters of Jonah. Amen. And so I want us to get our Bibles ready because we're going to be jumping around a little bit, but I believe that there's a picture of obedience and disobedience that God wants to bring to our attention this morning as it relates to operating under God's authority and operating in exercising his spiritual authority. Amen. So let's take a look at the first chapter and I'm going to try to read this rather quickly. So stay with me this morning. It says in chapter one, verse one, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, go to the city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tar Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. Now notice, I want us to understand that he did not just go next door uh, to Nineveh or next door to uh, where he was. He went to the furthest place that he could get to, amen, from where he currently was. So he ran away from God. How many of us have been there? Where we felt the Lord calling us, amen, but maybe we ran away. Maybe some of us are still running 
away from the Lord. But it says after paying the fare, amen, he went abroad and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Verse four, then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid and each cried out to their own God. And they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below the deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, how can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us and we will not perish. I want us to drop down to verse 11. The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to make the sea calm down for us? And verse 12, he says, pick me up and throw me into the sea. He replied and it would become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon us. Let's skip down to verse 15. It says, then they took Jonah and threw him overboard. My God. And the raging sea grew calm. At this point, the men greatly feared the Lord and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. Amen. What I noticed here, even in the first part of this passage is that Jonah received a commission from the Lord. Like each and every one of us have received a commission from the Lord. Amen. He receives this commission from the Lord and it wasn't the fact that he did not hear what the Lord was speaking. Amen. But it was the simple fact that he heard and he chose to disobey. Amen. See, some of us might still be trying to hear from the Lord and what the Lord is, is calling us or commissioning us to do. But then there's some who has heard what the Lord has commissioned, has heard what the Lord has commanded, has heard what the Lord has told us to do. But we with great uh, uh, just uh, hearing has heard the Lord's command and has chosen to turn in a different direction. Amen. So Jonah finds himself going as far away from the Lord as he could possibly go. Maybe he didn't understand that the Lord is omnipresent and he's everywhere at the same time. So there is absolutely nowhere that you can go to hide from the Lord. But as he began to go in the opposite direction, what that signified was, was that he was going and walking in disobedience. And I want us to understand one thing about disobedience is that disobedience will literally move us further and further and further away from the presence of God. It will move us further and further away out of proximity to God. Amen. It's not that God loves us any less. Amen. Because God loves each and every one of us. Amen. Even in our disobedience, but it does something to the relationship and the closeness and the proximity that we have have with the Lord. And I believe that Jonah, before he chose to disobey, had a closeness and a relationship with the Lord. He knew God, but he decides at that very moment to go as far away as he can walking in disobedience. And how many of y'all know that as we walk in disobedience, it opens the door to many con uh, consequences in our lives. It opens the door to many things. Why? Because we have removed ourselves out from under the authority of God. Amen. And so we have to be mindful this morning that we are not living our lives from under, out from under the authority of God. It was in that moment when Jonah made the decision to pay the fare. He paid for his disobedience. Amen. He paid the fare to get on that ship and to move as far away as he could from his assignment. My gosh. Amen. He paid the fare to move. Amen. He walked willingly in disobedience to what the Lord was calling him to do. 
What I understand about a, a God's authority and living under God's authority is that in order to live under God's authority, one must obey. God's authority comes through the avenue, through the channel of obedience. Amen. But when we are not living in obedience, what we're telling the Lord is, I do not value your authority in my life. I believe that 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 what I uh, cho choose to do or desire to do, amen, amen, uh, is, is more important than what it is I feel as though you are leading or commanding me to do, amen. And so as Jonah makes this particular decision, he sees and, and he sees the, co the 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 consequences that begin to arise. Not only Jonah is affected by his decision to walk in disobedience, but now he has a whole ship full of people who are um, who are uh, going to be uh, um, um, have to live under the consequences of his disobedience. But what I realized with, with, with Jonah, because sometimes we'll find ourselves in places where um, we have gone further and further and further away. Uh, from the presence of God, from relationship with the Lord, because we're deciding to live how we want to live, do what we want to do, go where we desire to go. Amen. And, and live in that disobedience. But what I noticed about Jonah is that when he realized that it was his disobedience that was causing so much havoc and chaos all around him. Amen. It was because of his disobedience, amen, that not only was he suffering consequences, but everybody else around him was suffering because of his disobedience. Amen. He realized at that moment that I'm going to have to sacrifice something. Amen. He, he realized at that moment. That in order for me to get back into relationship, back into close proximity to the father, that it's going to cost me my life. That I'm going to have to sacrifice something. I cannot uh, spend the rest of my days running away from the Lord. But he realized in that moment that he had become so far away from the presence of God that it was going to take and require an act of sacrifice and humility to draw him back into the presence of God. Amen. He humbled himself and he spoke in, in, in this particular passage. He says, it is me that is causing this destruction, this wind, this storm that is happening all around us. Take me and toss me overboard. Somebody say sacrifice. He was willing to sacrifice his life to save the people on the ship. He was willing to sacrifice his life to find his way back under God's authority. See, as we are living for the Lord, as we are walking and carrying out his commission and doing what it is that he has called us to do, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you your life. And many of the times people may not want to follow in obedience because they are scared about what they're going to have to give up to follow Christ. Am I speaking to someone today where the Lord had been calling and calling and calling you? Amen. But we decided or you decided, amen, to go in your own way, in your own direction, because you were too afraid to give up what you currently have. Amen. On a quest for what God had for you. Because you, were willing to, you, you weren't willing to lose your life for the sake of Christ. Amen? And Jonah at that moment, he says, it's going to cost me my life to save the people on this ship. And when Jonah was tossed overboard, amen, the people were able to see the power of God at work when the, when the seas grew still and the storms calm down. And the people on the ship who once at one time served other gods, the people who were on that ship, they said, we will vow to serve you. The one who has all power and all authority that even the winds and the sea will obey him. 
Amen. So even in his disobedience, amen, God still received the glory, even in his disobedience, but it was in his sacrifice and his humility that turned every heart on that ship to the Lord. There are some souls that are connected to your sacrifice. There are some people that are attached, amen, to, to you just saying, God, I'm all in. God, use my life. There are some people that will come to know the Father, that will come to know Jesus as their Lord and as their Savior because you are humbling yourself and you're saying, I'm choosing this day to come under the authority of God. So that you may use me in the earth, even if it it, 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 it it may cost me something. But I'm choosing this day to come under the authority of God. Amen. I believe that in our sacrifice. God is not far away from us. Sometimes we feel like if I give this up, amen, then I'm going to be alone. Amen. If I give this thing up, then I'm going to be by myself. Amen. I'm not going to have uh, what, what, I, what I think I'm losing. Amen. And so, it, 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 and, but I want to encourage someone today that in your sacrifice, in your decision to say, Lord, I'm coming under your authority. Lord, I'm submitting to your will. I'm submitting to your word. I'm submitting to what it is that you are calling me to do. I believe that the Lord God is not far away. Matter of fact, he's right there with us. Amen. But it's in our disobedience where we're driven away from the presence of God. I want to prove it to you in this verse. Let's look at Jonah two verse four. He says, I said, I have been banished from your presence. Yet I will look again towards your holy temple. So as he found himself in the belly of the fish, amen, he had, was at the bottom of the sea because of his disobedience, amen. And he knew at that moment that he had, in his disobedience, that he had been carried uh, far away from the presence of God, amen. But it was at that place of sacrifice, it was at that place of humility where he found himself on his knees, amen. He says, whatever I need to do to get myself back into the presence of God, to get myself back into closeness and proximity right now, I'm at the furthest place than I could possibly go besides death. And he began to open his mouth and he began to cry out to the Lord. He began to pray with, with all of his heart. Amen. At the bottom of the sea in a belly of a fish. And let me just tell you that God did not leave him there by himself. God was there with him, even in the time of sacrifice. Amen. He found him there. And my question to us today is where did God find you? When you made a decision to say, Lord, I'm all in, Lord, I, I, I'm willing to follow you, Lord, I'm willing to serve you, Lord, whatever it takes. I'm tired of, of straddling the fence and being, you know, in the world and of the world and in the church and of the church. It's exhausting. But where did God find you when you said, even if it cost me my life? Even if it cost me my relationships, even if it cost me my friends, even if it cost me some things, amen, I'm willing to give them up so that I can live, not just periodically visit moments of, 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 of living under your authority, but so that I can live under your authority. I remember just like it was yesterday, amen, 2004 in Vadasta, uh, uh, Georgia, in a small apartment, amen, when I told the Lord, Lord, I'm all in. I'm all in. If that means losing relationships and friends and, and all of these things, amen, I'm willing to pay the price. Amen. And I began to draw closer. See, it's something about obedience 
that draws you into the presence of God. Whereas disobedience pulls you away from the presence of God. Amen. And I remember feeling like in that apartment, I remember feeling like, man, I'm losing everything. I remember in that moment feeling as though I was all alone. Amen. But it was in that moment where the Lord showed up and the presence of God showed up on my life so powerfully. Amen. And I know and I believe that it was because of the decision that I made to come completely under God's authority. It was in the belly of the fish where God found Jonah on his knees praying. Amen. And it was in the belly of the fish where he found Jonah saying, Lord, I want to come in under your authority. Lord, whatever it is that you need for me to do, whatever it is, wherever it is that you need for me to go, I'm willing to go. I'm willing to do it. Amen. You see, there's something about prayer that signifies a humility. See, see, see people who don't pray, amen, struggle with humility because prayer is saying, God, I need you. And prayerlessness is a sin and prayerlessness sends, says, I got this. But Jonah humbles himself and he begins to pray and cry out and repent unto the Lord. And he says, Lord, whatever you need me to do, I'll do it. Just keep me under your authority. Amen. Disobedience moves us away from the presence of God. I want y'all to hear me this morning. Disobedience moves you not, not away from the love of God because he loves us, but it moves us away from the presence of God in our life. Whereas obedience welcomes the authority of God in our life. It welcomes the presence of God in our life. You know, I remember growing up and my father, he loved cologne. I mean, he loved cologne, but there was a certain fragrance that he loved y'all. And we would think like he was like pouring this cologne all over his suit because you could smell the aroma of this cologne. I mean, from a distance, he could be in the bathroom downstairs and we're all the way upstairs and we can smell. We know daddy is getting ready. He's getting dressed. He's about to go somewhere because we can smell the fragrance. We could smell his presence. When he entered the room, it filled with the fragrance of what he was wearing. Amen. But when he would leave, amen, that fragrance would slowly depart. Amen. When he first passed away, I could still smell that fragrance. Amen. But as years went by that, I, I can't smell it anymore. I don't know what it smells like anymore. Amen. And I believe that's the same is true uh, when it comes to just the presence and the fragrance of prayer. The, fra the fragrance and the presence of the Holy Spirit. When you're in close proximity with the Father through prayer, amen, prayer, you know, gives off a fragrance of its, of its own. But in relationship with the Father, in closeness with the Father, you can also receive and experience the fragrance and the presence of God. And so the same is true where there is prayerlessness. You lose the sense of his presence and his fragrance. Amen. And God is saying, if you're living under my authority, he says, I want you to always walk in this fragrance. I want you to always walk in this aroma that comes through relationship. And that relationship is built on the foundations of prayer and the word of God. Say hallelujah. Jonah tells us in, in the same chapter, chapter two, in verse nine, he says this. But I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish 
and it vomited Jonah unto dry land. Amen. Jonah says, I will offer praises and thanksgivings to you and I will do what I have vowed to do. What he was saying was, I know I, I took the scenic route. I know I, I took the long route. Amen. But that long route came with sacrifice and it came with humility and it aligned me back up. Amen. With the authority of God submitting myself to the authority of God. Amen. And letting you know that whatever it is that you have vowed for me to do, whatever it is that you have commanded for me to do, I vow to carry it out. Is that anybody's prayer today? Lord, whatever it is that you have called me to do, I'm finding myself in a position of humility and sacrifice coming back under. If I have found myself away and coming from up under the authority of God, I'm finding myself back under your authority, walking in obedience and what you have commanded or commissioned me to do. I vow to do it. And I love the last part of this where it says, then somebody say then. Amen. He could have spit Jonah out of that fish on the first day he prayed. But there was something about that third day prayer when he began to say, I vow to do what you have commanded me to do. Then the scripture says. The Lord ordered. And again, we see that the Lord exercises his authority authority over even the fish. So not only in this passage, do we see the power of God over the storm, but we also see his authority and his power even over the fish. And the fish spit Jonah out onto the beach. Even the fish is under God's authority. Let's look at this last passage found in Jonah three, one through three. And it says, then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you this time. Somebody say this time. Amen. Maybe that's somebody's uh, 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 cry today. This time, Lord, I know that you spoke to me last year. I know that you spoke to me uh, five years ago. I know that I have work to do. I know that there are some areas where I need to come under the submission of God. But this time. Today is somebody's this time, amen, where you are giving the Lord a yes and you are giving the Lord a yes to come under his submission and live a life of humility and sacrifice that no matter what the cost is, my God, I am coming under your authority. Because the only way that we can exercise authority, watch this guys, write this down. The only way that we can exercise the authority that he has given us in the earth is if we live and come under his authority. Oh my goodness. This time Jonah obeyed. This time, I want somebody to type that in the chat. This time I'm going to obey. This time I'm going to come under God's authority. Jonah says, the Lord commands, uh, uh, commanded me and he went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. Amen. I want us to write this bottom line down that we must submit to God's authority to exercise spiritual authority. If you don't get anything else, I want you to get this. I need you to write this down and get it. If we don't submit, if you don't submit to God's authority, amen, it's going to be really hard to operate in spiritual authority and God's authority that he has given. Amen. See, when we're not submitted to God's authority, we can hear what God is saying, but still run to Tarshish. We can hear what God is saying, but still turn around and disobey. Come on, somebody. Amen. 
but someone who lives under the authority of God can hear and will obey even, watch this, even if it's hard. Y'all, what God was commanding Jonah to do was very hard. He commanded him under his authority to give a word of judgment to Nineveh. Amen. Matter of fact, this is some people that he didn't even like. His people didn't even like. So you're telling me to go into a place with people that don't like my people to give them a word of warning and judgment so that they can have some time to get themselves together. Amen. No, Lord, I'm not doing this. And he runs away. So sometimes God will have us do some hard things. Maybe for you, sharing the gospel is a hard thing. Maybe for you, praying for someone is a hard thing. Maybe for you, making disciples is a hard thing. Maybe for you, prophesying a word that the Lord has given to you, then you're saying, oh Lord, what are they going to think? Is a hard thing. But Jonah said this time, Oh, somebody, somebody, somebody type that in the chat box. This time I will obey. This time I'm coming under the authority of God. This time. Amen. And he obeyed. See, Jonah wasn't delivering a soft word. Amen. But he was delivering a very hard word, a hard message. Amen. Of judgment. But because he went in. God's authority, it is because he went under God's authority. Amen. They received the word. Amen. Let me, let me read uh, verse four in chapter three, Jonah entered the city and shouted under God's authority. Listen, <laughs> amen. He says 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. But watch this. It was his obedience. It took a lot. I mean, he almost drowned. It was in a fish, all of this. But it was his obedience that gave Nineveh time to repent, gave Nineveh time to pray, gave Nineveh time to fast. Amen. We see we, we think this thing is just about us. We think what God has given us uh, uh, authority to do and to execute in the earth. We think it is just about us. Amen. There's somebody he's trying to get saved through your procl uh, proclamation of the gospel. It's somebody that he's trying to see disciple through you stepping out and making disciples. It's somebody that, that he's trying to, 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 to get healing through. Amen. Demons cast out. But we run away because we think that it's about us. How is this going to affect us? How is this going to, you know, inconvenience me? How is this going to trouble me? But God says, if you're under my authority, there is a humility and a sacrifice that comes with it. But with that, people will be saved, set free and delivered. Verse 10 of that same chapter, when God saw what they had done, because let me just tell you, when, when they heard that word from Jonah, they prayed, they, uh, they fasted, they did all of those things. Amen. They, 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 they repented. Amen. And so verse 10 says, when God saw what they had done, amen, they put a stop to their evil ways. He changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. And so my question to us is this, what has God given you authority to do in Jesus name. Amen. What, 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 what has he given you authority to do in Jesus name? I'll tell you what I'm going to say every, every week in this series to preach the gospel, to make disciples, to lay hands upon the sick, to cast out devils and whatever gifts he's given you to do. Amen. To execute those particular gifts, amen, with all power and authority. Amen. But the question that I want to leave with us this morning is this. Have we found ourselves completely under God's authority? Not just one foot in, 
or we can easily pull it away if we want to disobey and do our own thing. Amen. But have we found ourselves completely under God's authority? Amen. Because it's in that place where we're able to effectively execute spiritual authority in the earth. Amen. So I just want to encourage you, Emmanuel, light of the world. Amen. To live in such a way where you find yourself in close relationship and proximity to the father. Where we always find ourselves in a place of sacrifice, in a place of humility. Amen. So that we can execute exercise amen operate not just in power but also in authority there's a difference amen see you can have power and no authority amen when we operate in our gifts amen we're operating in the power right and so our, it, scripture says that our gifts come without repentance. That's why you can see people operating in, in some supernatural power and operating in their gifts. Amen. But have no relationship with God. Amen. They have not submitted to his authority. Amen. And there's a scripture that talks about this when they said, when, when the disciples say, you know, uh, Lord, we cast out demons in your name. We, we you know, uh, laid hands on the sick in your name. We did all this in your name. And he says, I never knew you. What he's saying is you, you never came under the authority. Amen. You never submitted yourself to me. I was never Lord really over your life. Yes, I allowed you to operate in my power. Amen. But you did not have my authority because authority comes with obedience. Jesus demonstrates that on the cross. It was his humility and his obedience even unto death where God exalted him. Amen. Hallelujah. And where all authority was given to Jesus. But I just want us to be encouraged today. I want us to be strengthened. Find our way. If you found your way at a distance, if you see that maybe I'm, I'm, I'm in Tarshish right now, amen, that we would find ourselves making our way back into the presence of God. And maybe you're in the presence and you can hear the voice of God. You hear what he's saying. But because of fear, because of um, just a, des a desire to do other things. Amen. That we've put our own desires. Amen. Ahead of our uh, ahead of God's. I believe that the Lord wants to use each and every one of us to do great and mighty things. But I don't want us want him to just use us with power, but I want us want him to entrust us with authority that comes through obedience. Amen. My prayer is that you were blessed by this message today. Hallelujah. And for those who are watching uh, this morning, I just want um, to pray with those who have not found themselves in relationship with the father. You have not made Jesus your Lord and Savior. I want to give you an opportunity to do that now. Can I pray with you and you pray with me? Father God, I just thank you for each and every person that is listening and has received this message today. And they can feel and sense the knocking on their heart of the Holy Spirit. Father God, I ask that they would open their hearts and allow you to come in. Father God, I thank you right now that they're making the confession that they believe that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior that he died on the cross for their sins and he rose again on the third day. And Father, whatever sins that they have committed, they're confessing them now. They're repenting from their, from their ways. And we're asking that you would forgive them of their sins, cleanse them from all unrighteousness, purify their hearts, and come into their hearts. Father, we bless you and we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. 
In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Well, my prayer is that you were blessed and that you received this word this morning. If you could just type that in the chat box, I received. And we'll see you all next time.